Let's take a look at what things would look like if we had to analyze some data from a respirometer type experiment. So in this case, we're not gonna look at an actual table with some numbers in there, but we're more looking at um, what to do with all the data that you're collecting and how to think about all of this. So first of all, you know, there's different levels of analysis. You wanna show that you know how to process some data. So maybe calculating a mean is a good thing to try to do. Uh, plotting a graph is always important. If you can use software to do it, that's a great idea. If you don't know how to use some of those functions, figure out how to use some of those functions so you can figure out how to draw error bars and make sure to include all the information. Error bars should, if you can, show standard deviation. Uh, for less complex experiments, you could just show the minimum and maximum values. But if you really want to demonstrate some processing skills and use some real statistics to help you out for your IA or extended essays, you should really try to show standard deviation, calculate standard deviation and show it on your graph. It's great for discussing precision and accuracy as well too. This should be straight, pretty straightforward. I think you all understand independent variables go here, dependent variables go up here on the Y axis. And you can represent these bars, these error bars here with a line going above and a line going below. If it's standard deviation you've calculated, the distance going up and going down should be exactly the same. If you're not showing that, showing minimum and maximum values, then they could be different lengths. So make sure what's showing up on your graph is actually what's right. Don't assume your software is just going to do it correctly. Logger Pro doesn't have an easy way for you to do this. I think you have to manually type in the error bars and add it in. If you're using Microsoft Excel, you can calculate the standard deviations and set those column boxes as the actual values for the error bars. It's quite complex. Uh, I think I made a video at some point about that years ago. And if you're using something else like whatever the spreadsheet software is on a Mac, uh, I can't help you. You need to describe a trend in the end as well too. So when this is all going around, uh, obviously you have to do this. This is actually good review for the data analysis type questions that'll show up on your exams because what they're trying to assume, they're hoping that you as a hardworking student, a reflective student is able to look at sample data and be able to come to a conclusion about the data because that's how what scientists need to do. If one group looks at the data and says, yes, this shows the drug is working, and another group looks at the data and says, no, that data clearly shows the drug is not working, then we have a problem and we have to be able to argue that, argue that out. And believe it or not, a lot of the data that does come out can yield two or three different possible conclusions. And so, on paper two for your exams, they're really gonna ask you about this. And sometimes the mark scheme will allow different interpretations of the data, but it needs to be based on logic. It needs to be based on trends, patterns, and uh, things that are there with the numbers through the analysis as well too. So you really need to be able to do this as a scientist. And when you get to college, if you decide to study science, not only will you be doing more complex experiments, you'll also be studying from the greats and looking at actual published data and seeing how people reached their conclusions and how the theories of science have become what they are today.